Hi guys, so welcome back. I hope you guys had an awesome week. Um, like you all know, the video for today is going to be how I made the mirror of Eriset. So this was the first Yeti item in my first ever mystery box. Um, and yeah, I am really happy with how this one came out. Uh, like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I still want the Noble Collection one, which is a bit more 3D and yeah, it just is beautiful. Um, but this one is a really good in-betweener, I think. Um, and they really look good with the Funko Pops. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this one came out. So yeah, basically I got an image from the internet um, of what the Mirror of Eriset looked like. Um, and I imported it into Coral Draw and then I kind of just went from there. Um, and yeah, this took me a really long time to design. I think all in all, this took the longest time. Um, but yeah, I really just felt that you have to do all the tiny little details um, just so that you really get the effect um, and that at first glance, you know exactly what it is. Um, even though it's not 100% a replica, um, from a distance, close up, you know exactly what mirror this is. So that was the only... <laughs> <laughs> that was the only main thing that I wanted is that you can immediately identify it as the mirror of Eriset. So yeah, so I drew it up in Coral Draw. I sent it to my local laser cutter and they cut it out for me. So if we look at what the MDF looks like, so this is basically the raw wood that they cut it out of. It's called, it's called MDF. Um, so yeah, I did four layers. So let's look at the layers from the back. So obviously this is the backboard. Um, this is what it looks like in the end. Uh, like you can see there, I just decided to close it up. It just looks neater. Um, and if you have like a two way display and you can see the back of your items, um, then this doesn't look too bad. Um, like you can see here, I added some screws. Um, this was, pfft, I kind of didn't know if I was going to do that or not, um, but yeah, in the end, I decided with the screws. Um, it was between the screws or pasting them closed. Um, and yeah, maybe it would have looked nicer if you didn't have screws there. But for me, having cats, um, and I think a lot of you that have kids, uh, but the chance of the glass breaking is always kind of a factor, I think. Um, so yeah, I just decided to make the back removable so that should the glass break or the mirror break, um, you can actually replace it um, because it is a weird shape and so it's not just a square. Um, so yeah, that's that's just why I decided on doing that. Then if we look at the next piece, the next piece goes right on top. Um, so this is basically the frame for your mirror. So if we look at the mirror, I'm sorry, this mirror is still dirty. I haven't cleaned it yet, but basically the mirror then sits in there. So the MDF is three millimeters uh, thick and the mirror is three millimeters thick. So if we look at the third layer, this is just a bit of detail and to give it depth. Um, I didn't want to do this all in one layer. I could have if I wanted to, um, but I really wanted to get depth from it. Um, and I think this was the best way that I could do that. Um, and then obviously the last layer is the outside detail. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much what the mirror then looks like. Next, we are going to look at the foot piece. This is a very basic foot piece, um, but yeah, I had to get something so that it can stand up on its own and doesn't fall over very easily. And yeah, this was the most basic design that I could that I could use um, and for it to still look good. Um, so yeah, if we look at the top three, you will see that this one and the back one are shorter than the middle one. So I made a little peg, like you can see there. I made a little peg that goes in there um, so that it can actually stand up straight. I made these holes a bit smaller than what this is. Um, the reason for that is I was scared that if I made it exactly the same size, 
it might be a bit flimsy. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to use a very small file and just keep on filing it until this actually fits in there. Um, and that way I know it is super secure um, and I don't have to worry about it actually falling over. Um, so yeah, that is that. So those are all the pieces I am going to use. Um, but for now, I'm going to put the mirror and the backing away as well as the foot piece. And I'm only going to work with these three. So for the start, these now have to be pasted um, onto one another. I'm going to use again my trusty carpenter's glue and a bit of masking tape just to keep it so that it doesn't uh, shift around um, and that just helps it along a bit. And then for the screws, I am using 13 millimeter long, three millimeter thick uh, screws. And to spray paint them, I am going to use metallic gold spray paint. Um, so yeah, you can get this basically at any hardware store. Okay guys, so we are going to start pasting these. Um, basically, I am going to start from the back and work my way to the top. The reason for that is if you make a mistake at the back, it's not that big of a train smash um, because your front is the most important, so you can do that one last. Um, and then, yeah, obviously with these two, you have a front, you have a clear front and a back. Um, but with this last one, it is always better to uh, use the same front always because if you turn this around and you use the back you might have made a tiny mistake when it comes to your symmetry and then stuff might not line up um, so always if you do multiple layers of the same design always try to use the same front um, and that way you are sure that everything is going to line up properly so first of all i am going to once again use my trusty carpenter's glue um, and yeah, just put not too much uh, glue on here, just enough so that it actually sticks. And that is enough. So I turn, ooh, I turn this guy around. Just paste this one on top. Pick this one up and then you'll see like glue comes out and you can just basically clean it off with your fingers a bit. So yeah, now you can just make sure that this lines up properly. So you can leave that for about half an hour and then we can do the top one. Okay guys, so this one has cured. So all I do is I just lift these up. Backing. Okay, so once again, we start off from one side, just make sure that everything lines up properly.
So you will see that some places on the inside, a bit of glue will come, come through. Um, so yeah, just take your nail and just remove that um, because you don't want there to be lumps and bumps on the inside. Um, well, especially on the inside of your design. And yeah, you can basically just put this one aside um, and let it cure and then we can go on and spray it. So next, I have removed the backing um, and the four screws. The reason why I do that before doing the mirror is because I want to make sure everything lines up properly um, and that way I don't crack the mirror because yeah, we don't wanna do that. So the next step is I have cleaned the mirror so I can now put it in and you will see it doesn't line up properly. Um, so you'll just have to kind of eye it with this one especially like if you can see when i do that you can see this bottom line is not parallel um, or is not straight so that is the most important piece that you want to concentrate on because you don't want when you put this mirror on the base you don't want that piece to be all squonky um so yeah with this one, because it is very skew, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the mirror again and then place it onto the stand. And then when I put the mirror in, I can make sure that, because see, if you look there, it actually is very, very skew. But now if I do that, it is 100% straight um, or as straight as it can be. So yeah, and the next step is optional. Um, I don't want my mirror to move around when it's in the backing. So I want it to sit where it should um, without it being affixed so much so that if the mirror breaks, I can't remove it at all. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make sure that the bottom lines are properly um, and then you'll see like there's a gap and there's a gap so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use a bit of glue from a glue gun um and yeah you can use as much as you think um to use but it's basically just to go into that little there and you can just take any excess can you can take it off And now you'll see your mirror can't move around really. So I'm just gonna do the same here, just a little bit. And yeah, should this mirror break at any point, um, removing the glue is not very difficult. So I'm pretty happy with that and now all I do is I can just put the backing on again and put in the screws. And that is how I made the mirror of RSA. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe as well as follow me on Instagram. I hope you guys have an awesome week and I will see you next week for a, a very cool Funko haul. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you guys then.